So, um, good afternoon, Chair Watts. Uh, from the uh, city staff perspective, I believe we have all staff and consultants here. I think you're still waiting for one uh, fellow board member. So, but I just want to yes. know all staff here at this time. Thank you. Yes, it looks like we're um, missing board member Grable. So we'll wait a couple minutes and then uh, get started. Okay. And uh, Secretary Atha, if you're on and would have the ability to try and um, uh, text board member Grable to see if he might be available. That would be great. I will try to do that. Oh, he just joined. Great. So it looks like we have everyone on. Um, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 102. And if we could get a um, roll call. Yes. Yeah. Chairperson Watts. Here. Board Member Grable. Here. Board Member Wright. Here. Thank you, everyone is present. So we will move to item number two, any announcements? Seeing none, uh, let's move to public comment. And this, uh, we are now taking public comments on item three. Um, if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. If you are dialing in via telephone, please dial, dial star nine to raise your hand. Secretary, do we have any public comment at this time? There are no hands raised for public comment at this time. Great, thank you. So we will move to item four, new business uh, 4.1. Uh, Director Burke, if you would like to introduce this item. Thank you, Chair Watts um, and board members. Uh, we are here today after um, quite a number and many months of a lot of hard work with staff to uh, bring forward our preliminary water and wastewater rate study for the board's uh, review input. And uh, Deputy Director Zanino, as well as our consultant, Bob Reed, with the Reed Group, will be making the presentation. Good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'll just start by introducing Bob and Mark um, to the group, as well as just give a little overview of what we've been working on. Uh, and then actually Bob Reed will be um, doing the presentation and running that from his screen. So he'll share his screen when it comes time for that. Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that as a first step, we have been working on updating the um, the long range financial model that has been going on for more than over a year, but most recently we have added current expenditures for the fiscal year 1920. Um, we have also been able to add uh, bond funding that we are currently in the process of working on, as well as letting you know that there is a refunding that became available to us through the process of acquiring new bonds. Um, all of that will be coming to you this week, actually, at the board meeting, at the, at the full board meeting. 
and those have all been able to be added in as well um, in order to calculate what possible rates and where they may stand. Um, we are also working on a communications plan. So this is gonna be a robust communications plan that um, talks to the public and to the board members and council members about what our um, infrastructure is, um, letting our uh, customers especially know what service is being provided and what their rates are paying for. Um, we are um, looking to have that come out very soon, the beginning stages of that communication plan, and hopefully we'll be able to share some of that with you at the next meeting. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our rate consultants, uh, Bob Reed and Mark Hildebrand. Uh, I believe Bob is going to be handling most of the presentation today. Uh, yes, uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, pleasure to, to be here with you this afternoon. I'm going to um, uh, share my screen if I can do that. Looks like I can um, with the PowerPoint uh, presentation that I'd like to uh, share with everyone. Um, with me today is, is Mark Hildebrand. Uh, Mark and I have been working on this project together uh, um, uh, as we've gone through this process and he and I are working on a number of, of projects together as, uh, as I'm kind of easing my way into retirement. He's uh, picking things up for me and, and doing a great job. So this is a uh, introduction of, of Mark to the, to the city as well. Um, I'd like to uh, encourage anyone who has a question as I go through the presentation um, uh, to ask them. Um, and uh, I think that'll make the, the discussion a little bit more um, uh, beneficial. Um, as I'm sharing my screen, I can't see everybody else. So uh, I'm a little bit handicapped that way, but uh, hopefully you can see my screen now. Yes? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. I see it. Okay, thank you. So we've been working on updating the water and wastewater uh, financial plan models for the city um, over the last uh, many months here, um, incorporating new financial information as, as it's become available uh, with the purpose of developing new rate recommendations for the next four year period. The, um, the city in the past has adopted five-year rate plans and we're looking at a four-year rate plan this, this time around. Uh, but what I'm going to do as we go through this presentation is, is summarize the, the, the project and, and the analyses that we're uh, going through, have gone through, and are continuing to work on. We'll pay particular attention to the financial plan development. We've got a 10-year cash flow model uh, for water, for the local wastewater system, as well as for the sub-regional uh, system. We'll talk about some of the key financial issues and inputs um, that go into uh, developing the annual revenue requirements. And that's sort of a, a term of art. Um, the revenue requirement is, is the amount of money that we need to uh, raise through the rate structure um, to cover uh, uh, costs of, of, uh, of each of the utilities. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about rate structure issues, although our Next meeting with the subcommittee is um, uh, for towards the end of October. And we'll talk more about the cost of service and rate structure issues uh, in that meeting. So today we'll focus primarily on the financial plan. So those are, are basically the, the overall steps in, in conducting this study. One, to determine the revenue requirements. We do that through the financial planning models. Um, and then we go through a cost of service analysis where we're proportionately assigning uh, costs uh, of uh, operations and, and debt service and, and capital improvements, uh, proportionally allocating those out to different customer classes and ultimately to customers based on demand and usage characteristics and uh, requirements of being provided service. And then we design the rate schedules, the rate structure and the rate schedules uh, is, is sort of the third step. Um, but the the first step there is really the most important um, in terms of determining the revenue needs for the utility. Uh, the other steps in this study, we're not looking at significant changes to the rate structures, either water or wastewater, we're really updating the cost of service analysis, but really maintaining the, the basic rate structure. So most of the effort with this study has been in the uh, determining the revenue requirements through the financial plan analysis. So as I mentioned, it is a 10-year cash flow model. So we're looking at revenues coming into the utilities, 
uh, expenses going out, um, uh, non-rate revenues come into play, so interest earnings and miscellaneous revenues and demand fees and that sort of thing gets incorporated within the analysis as well. Um, we also look at reserves and reserve policies. And, and part of this project, we're also looking at, at your current reserve policies and um, uh, developing some recommendations, particularly with respect to the catastrophic uh, reserves and, and increasing the, the money set aside for uh, catastrophic events. We'll talk a bit more about that today as, as well as um, in our next meeting towards the end of October. Um, Part of the uh, complexity associated with this study is, is the sub-regional system and how that interacts with the local wastewater uh, uh, utility and the local uh, rates for the city. Um, we do have the, the financial plan model does include a component for the sub-regional system where costs are allocated out to each of the user agencies um, with a majority of those costs being assigned to the city's uh, customers and the local wastewater utility. So we are uh, incorporating all the information associated with the sub-regional system in this analysis as well. Bob, can I interrupt yes. you for one second? Can I get you to put it into full presentation mode? Because that'll make it bigger on our screens as Let well. see if I can do that. Um, At the top of the screen, you should be able to. Oh, that's showing that's your not, notes. That's not helping. Let me see if I can't uh, let me go back. No. Nope. It's okay if you can't. It just it would make it a little bit larger on our screens if yeah, let me see what I can do here. Bob, I think you click on slideshow at the top in the mm -hmm. top menu. Click on slideshow and then um, from current slide. No, next one over. Yeah. I hope that's showing your notes, though. So I, I think it's going onto your other screen, Bob. The full presentation's on your second screen. Oh, okay. okay. Let me see if I can switch. <laughs> you know, it's the combination of uh, Zoom and PowerPoint. That's. I've gone through this. I wish I could explain how I fixed it, but it was under the uh, under duress, so I don't remember what I did. <laughs> uh. Uh, no, that doesn't do it. Did it give um, you the option to share when you, when you click share screen, did it give mm -hmm. you the option to pick which screen to share? Yeah, let me, let me end the share and, uh, and then try restart again. it. You should so, be able to pick which one you want to share from. Yeah. Sorry. I thought that would be a lot less complicated. <laughs> Uh, that's not doing it either. Let's see. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I can't get it to, let's see. I can share it from mine if you want to just tell me when to change slides. Do you want to do that? Notes. I can do that. Oh, okay. Sorry for the technical difficulty. That's okay. Uh, Robert, I think you need to give me permissions to do that. I just made you a co-host, so you should be able to do that. Okay. All right, I think this was the slide we're on. Yeah, we were on the on the slide. So uh, thank you, Kimberly. So uh, this is just a, a, a simple schematic that um, uh, shows the, the cash, the major cash flows of the financial plan models. On the left side, we have um, the primary source of revenue is the user rate revenue. We've got other revenues that flow into the operating fund, interest earnings, miscellaneous 
revenues as well as um, uh, demand fee uh, monies from new development. And then if there's um, debt proceeds or grant funding, those would uh, flow into uh, capital appropriations. So most of the activity goes on in the operating fund. Um, within that, we carve out part of that fund balance uh, for the operating reserve, and that's 15% of your um, uh, actual operating and maintenance costs, and that's under you know your current policy for an operating reserve. We always want to maintain at least that amount in the utilities at all time, and we do that. And then we're also modeling the catastrophic reserves, and you've had catastrophic reserves for a number of years. I think more than um, I think more than a dozen years now. Uh, but recently got recommendations to increase the amount set aside for those um, uh, because of the potential need that you might have um, during a catastrophic event. And we'll talk more about, about that. There's also a rate stabilization reserve as part of the local wastewater system. And then there's some other designated reserves for, for debt service and so on. And, and those don't directly impact the, the rates or the, um, uh, the financial analysis, but they are, um, we are taking them into account in the analysis that we're doing. And then out of the operating fund, we have operating and maintenance costs, including water purchase costs, uh, wastewater treatment, sub-regional system expenses, you know, show up there as part of the local wastewater uh, utility as, as well as collection uh, system costs, and then debt service. And then capital projects are funded out of your uh, CIP appropriations. So, uh, each year you set aside money for uh, capital projects and, and, and then when those projects are completed, uh, that's the cash flow for that. So moving to the next slide, um, some of the primary inputs in this analysis is, is we did uh, update the models um, in the last month or two uh, using actual fund and reserve balances as of the la end of last fiscal year. So as of June 30, 2020, um, these aren't audited numbers yet. Uh, the the um, financial statements won't be prepared for several more months, but um, these are uh, pretty good numbers. And so we use this as the, the starting point for our analysis. We've also incorporated the um, current fiscal year budget for both revenues and expenses. And we go into the, uh, we've been pulling um, uh, the detailed information from the city's um, records to, to do that. Uh, and then we also have um, uh, anticipated capital spending um, for each of the utilities, uh, starting with last year and then going all the way out to uh, fiscal 31, um, both in terms of your current CIP and then some estimates developed uh, in discussions with staff beyond that. But we've got uh, numbers there for the entire 10-year planning period. Um, we also are looking at your existing debt service schedules. Most of the debt is within the sub-regional system for the wastewater treatment facilities, but there's a little bit in water and, and some in local wastewater as well. So we are reflecting uh, all of those costs for all of the existing issues, as well as uh, folding in now estimates for what the 2020 bond issue, the sub-regional issue for the UV project, uh, as well as uh, refunding one of the issues there. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that, but you'll get more details on that uh, um, uh, in your upcoming DPU meeting. And then also we've uh, obtained utility billing data um, for all your, your customers um, out of the billing system. And this is really used for the cost of service and rate design analysis, not so much in the financial plans, but we have that detailed billing data, water usage histories uh, for last fiscal year as, as well. Um, and that was a, a big part of the, the data analysis was obtaining that information. So next slide, um, some of the assumptions. So we, we look at the current snapshot of revenues and expenses right now, and then we go out for a 10 year planning period. So we are assuming uh, general inflation as well as inflation for construction um, on, on capital spending at 3% per year, um, uh, each year going forward. Uh, salary uh, expenses are inflating at 2% per year. Um, this was developed in conversations with staff. Uh, utilities uh, inflation at 4% a year. And then water purchases um, from Sonoma Water. And this is a, a very significant part of your uh, water system uh, budget. We're assuming 6% uh, increases in Sonoma Water's rates. Um, about half 
of the revenue that you get from water usage charges uh, is to uh, cover water purchase costs. And so it's a, it's a very significant cost item in the, in the water utility. Um, in terms of uh, interest earnings on money that you have in the bank and your, and your various reserves, we're assuming a one and a half percent per year interest rate, uh, fairly conserved right now, although interest rates are trending downward in the current economic climate. And then we looked at recent um, history in terms of uh, demand fee revenues tied to new development. And based on, on that, we've incorporated a 0.86% uh, per year growth rate in terms of new connections uh, uh, paying demand fees. So, so that would not include reconnects from you know, houses that may have been destroyed in the Tubbs fire or, or other events that are, are rebuilding, but, but new uh, uh, connections uh, that would be paying demand fees. And then we're also assuming stable water demand uh, during this planning period and, and not significant cutbacks as a result of uh, a drought or water shortage. Um, uh, uh, we've got other mechanisms in place to help deal with that. Uh, and we can talk more about that as we go through this. And then, um, so those are the primary assumptions that help us uh, estimate the revenues and expenses over this 10 year planning period. We'll move to the next slide. Oh, other direction. There we go. I, I mentioned that we're we're starting the model using your um, uh, fund and reserve balances as of the end of last fiscal year. So this just summarizes those. Um, about twenty one point seven million dollars for the water utility. Um, uh, about a quarter of that is your operating reserve uh, and then nearly six million in your catastrophic reserve. That's the current policy level for that. And then almost $11 million in undesignated reserves. Um, so once we filled up the bucket for those designated reserves or the, uh, uh, you know, those other ones, then, then the balance goes into that uh, egg undesignated um, pot. On the wastewater utility, the operating reserve is about one point, almost 1.8 million. The catastrophic reserve, 6.8. A little bit of money in the rate stabilization reserve, so we're accounting for that, although we're not using it. And then about 9 million in undesignated reserves. And then the sub-regional system, we have about 8.2 million um, in the operating reserve, a catastrophic. And then there, you also have a, a geysers reserve, which is sort of a catastrophic reserve related to the geysers system. Um, not shown on, on this slide are, are monies that have been set aside for uh, CIP projects um, in prior appropriations. There are also some money that could be refunded to your uh, sub-regional user uh, member agencies if they wanted that or they can use that to uh, uh, defray uh, rate increases or cost increases that they would otherwise have as well as some funds set aside for bond guarantee. So, so we, we consider all of those things in the model, but they don't uh, um, uh, actively play a role in, in the rate calculation uh, process. So, and then our, our next slide, just to orient you to the uh, utilities a little bit more, this is showing current revenues for water and, and local wastewater utilities, about um, a little over 50 million for the water utility. Uh, almost 72 million for wastewater. You can see in both cases that the, uh, the rate revenue, which is the, the two blue wedges on the water and the two green wedges on wastewater, um, that's your rate revenue, is the primary revenue source for both utilities. And in both cases, it's the usage charges um, that are the most significant part of your rate revenue. So, so revenue tied to actual water use, or in the case of wastewater, winter water use. Um, and then we, we do reflect uh, interest earnings and other operating revenues as well as demand fee revenues, but they play a smaller role. So a little over 50 million and almost 72 million in revenues here. And then on the next slide, we summarize expenses. Um, here for, for water, that lighter blue is our water uh, purchases from Sonoma Water. And then uh, other O&M expenses of operating the water system, a little bit of debt service, it's a pretty small wedge there, and then um, a pretty significant check chunk set aside for capital spending. Um, on the wastewater side, uh, significant cost for the sub-regional system to pay for treatment disposal costs, that's the lighter green wedge. 
there. And then the local wastewater is, is really the collection system uh, for the local collection system within the city. Uh, uh, debt service for the local um, uh, wastewater uh, utility. And then also the local share of sub-regional debt. That's the lighter shaded peach color in that wastewater graph. Um, uh, pretty significant um, sub-regional debt service that flows to the wastewater utility. And then pay-as-you-go capital spending uh, is as well there. In both of these, the, our expenses are a little bit less than, than the revenues. Um, water was about 50 and 50 million in revenue, 48, almost 49 million in expenses and, and similar um, situation for the local wastewater. Uh, but that's where we start looking at, at reserves and how much do we need in, in reserves. And, um, but having that little bit of a surplus is, is helpful as we look at the, the rate needs going forward. So with the next slide, um, wanted to, to just briefly touch upon our uh, capital spending. And this is, we call it plan pay go, pay as you go spending. So this isn't related to uh, uh, project expenses that would be covered through uh, debt issuance. Um, and we're not looking at new debt for either water or the local wastewater system. But as, as you know, there, there will be new debt money for the UV project uh, for the sub-regional system. But we are showing gradual increases for both water and wastewater uh, throughout this period and, and in future years for, for water, growing at about 3%. I, I think that the needs out there for rehabilitating and, uh, the system, the water system and infrastructure is, is probably greater than what's reflected here. But I, I think that you know the um, city is trying to uh, spend the money that's been set aside for capital projects and, and, and to do that. So we're just kind of um, reflecting this uh, pace of, of new capital spending here that would be growing beyond this five-year period here, growing at about 3% per year, which is basically the, the pace of inflation. Um, local wastewater, we've got a little different situation there where, where um, uh, debt service for the wastewater utility will fall off a bit in a few years, and that will be an opportunity to divert money away from debt service payments and direct it towards the uh, uh, capital spending for the local wastewater system. And so we've sort of reflected that uh, in the financial model as well. And then with the sub-regional system, um, capital spending there going up about a million dollars a year uh, I think that continues up to about $13 million uh, and then levels off to increase with inflation. So um, more significant growth in the sub-regional capital spending than in the other utilities. Um, and again, that those sub-regional dollars get allocated out to the user uh, agencies. So then with the next slide, um, uh, just summarize the existing uh, debt service obligations for utilities, very little debt with the water utility. So only about $800,000 per year in debt service payments. Um, that does increase with your scheduled debt service right now that will climb um, gradually over the next 10 years uh, up to about $3.8 million. So we're, that's one of the things that's affecting the um, water rates is is a growing debt service obligation. That's not new debt, it's just the existing debt service schedules that, that ramp up uh, over time. And then the, the local wastewater utility has about 2.2 million um, in existing debt service, and that will also grow uh, over the next seven years or so, up to almost $6 million. Uh, the sub-regional system, uh, currently has about $22.5 million per year in annual debt service, and that actually declines over the next uh, eight years or so. Um, so that will be beneficial um, uh, uh, because a, a big chunk of that flows to the local wastewater utility. So that's where we're, we're getting some, some room to divert more money on the local wastewater system into capital as those debt service obligations uh, decline a bit. Um, we are looking at that new debt issue in 2020, um, netting out about $60 million in uh, new money for the UV project. Um, uh, so that's a big chunk of it. And then um, also 
uh, and that would result at, at least initially with annual debt service about 2.1 million. And then a second component of that 2020 issue will, will be to refund the uh, 2012 bonds and take advantage of the very, very low interest rates that are available right now. Um, so that'll be about $56 million in debt related to that refunding. And that will save um, the city and the utility a, a little more than a half million dollars uh, a year um, for much of that uh, period, just from the lower interest costs. So, so that's um, uh, helping us out quite a bit in terms of the rate projections is the savings that are anticipated from, from that issuance. Uh, moving on. Um, so, so catastrophic reserves, this is something where you've recently gotten some recommendations to increase the level of the catastrophic reserves. So we're building that in with the water utility uh, because there are um, uh, um, available undesignated reserves. We can basically take the undesignated reserves and put it into the water catastrophic reserves to, to fill up that bucket. So, so there, the, the current level is 5.75 million and the recommendation is to go up to 17 and a half million, but we have money available to do that, to set it aside that way. Uh, the wastewater utility recommended, recommended increase to go from 6.8 up to 21 and a half million. Um, can't quite fund that all at once. And so we would take the undesignated money that we have and, and then add to it and, and gradually reach that target level uh, in, in about five years or so. Um, and then with the sub-regional system, um, right now the, the catastrophic reserve is about 1.7 million. We've got a placeholder, uh, the analysis to determine what the um, sub-regional catastrophic reserve level ought to be uh, is still uh, being developed. So we've just sort of plugged in a, a $10 million figure and, and we'll update and refine that as, as we move forward through this process as, as that information becomes available. And then the geysers reserve is recommended to increase from one and a quarter million up to 3.3. And so we're uh, gradually increasing the um, sub-regional cost to, uh, to fund that. Um, because of the interaction between the sub-regional system and your user agencies, we don't really have undesignated reserves to just you know, drop into that reserve. And so we really need to um, pick up money from the member agencies uh, um, you know, annually. So gradually funding that makes, makes more, more sense. Um, and then with respect to this catastrophic reserve, not only are we looking um, at increasing the levels, we'd also like to, to recommend that they really be available for a broader range of uses. And I, I think they've really been developed and estimates for them based on a major earthquake occurring that causes a lot of damage to infrastructure throughout. But, but um, you know, the city's had a number of fires in recent years. We've got a pandemic going on. We have periodic droughts. And so we're really looking at, at revising the, the policy language that would uh, make those monies available for some of these other significant needs when they arise. And, and so be able to draw down on some of those when there are some either um, uh, unanticipated costs associated with a catastrophic event or, or loss of revenues or a combination of those. And then the other recommendation that we're uh, like to um, encourage you to adopt is, is to inflate those target balances uh, for inflation each year so that they don't, you know, you don't lose the time value of, of money over time and, and those balances would um, effectively deteriorate if you don't do that. So we're incorporating that into our uh, uh, analysis as well. So that's a lot of background information going into the development of the financial plans. If we go to the next slide. Um, this summarizes uh, a lot of that analysis and there's a lot of big spreadsheets that, that go behind this, but a couple of graphs here that really summarize um, the water utility uh, financial plan. Um, and, and let me spend a couple of minutes explaining what, what these um, graphs uh, uh, show and, and, and tell you. The top graph um, shows both revenues and expenses on an annual basis for the water utility. The blue bars, the stacked bars, um, are your expenses. So the lighter blue is your O&M expenses, um, a little bit of debt service in that cross hash uh, a piece of that stacked bar. And then the darker blue at the top of your, is your capital spending, the pay-as-you-go 
capital spending. Um, so those are your uh, expenses for the water utility. Um, the green shaded, which is sort of in the, in the background here, are the, the revenues and the darker green at the bottom are the non-rate revenues. The, the middle and the major green uh, shaded area in the middle is existing rate revenues. Um, it grows slightly as you add new customers, but it's basically the existing uh, rate revenues. And then on top, that uh, lighter green uh, wedge that increases over time is the additional revenue that would uh, materialize as you adjust the rates on an annual basis. So revenues and expenses there, when, when the bars are higher than the background shading, that means your uh, expenses exceed your costs and, the, and your uh, reserve balances would be drawn down a bit. And when the revenues exceed your, your um, expenses, then you're building up your reserves a little bit. The, the bottom graph here um, shows the, the fund and reserve balances for the water utility. That dashed red line is the uh, minimum reserve associated with the operating reserve. We always want to stay above that. And then the, the black dashed line is, uh, uh, adds to that operating reserve, the catastrophic reserve balance. Um, and you can see that increase, you know, from fiscal year 20 to 21, uh, it ramps up pretty steeply and that's because of this new catastrophic uh, reserve uh, requirement. And then the blue line, the solid blue line across here is, is the end of year um, fund balance for uh, the utility each year of the planning period. And so you can see we get right up about to that catastrophic reserve and then, and then stay right along that throughout this planning period. So we always have that money or virtually all of that money available throughout this planning uh, uh, period. Um, so it would be available if, if needed in a, in a major event. Um, at the bottom, just some of the statistics about the rate increase. We also look at the debt coverage ratio, which is really a non-issue for the water utility. But the last two years, um, historically, there have been 5% rate increases in the water service charge, the fixed part of the rate structure. Uh, and then the usage rates have gone up by, uh, based on the changes in um, uh, uh, water supply costs, the uh, water purchases from Sonoma Water. Uh, and those have been in the 2.3 to 2.5% overall range impact on the usage rates recently. Going forward, um, the rate increases, annual rate adjustments um, are, are shown here, 2% for the upcoming year. Uh, and this is an overall rate increase to the entire water rate structure, followed by three years of 4%. Um, then we needed to bump it up slightly to 5%, and then it comes back down to four, uh, and then tapers down towards, towards the end. We're really focused on the next four years because we're looking at a four-year rate plan for the city to adopt. Um, and then you would update things. So uh, while we're looking at and paying attention to the, to the latter part of this planning period, um, you know, there are a lot of moving pieces here, but we try and keep the rates as, as uniform and consistent throughout the planning period as, as we develop our, our recommendations. Um, the next slide summarizes the same information, but for the wastewater utility. Uh, again, the stacked bars are the uh, expenses and the revenues are the green shading in the background on that top graph. You can see debt service is more significant here. Uh, and it is, this is reflecting both the local wastewater debt as well as the city's share of the sub-regional debt. And so you can see it's a, a pretty significant chunk of the overall cost. Um, but other, um, uh, we're also breaking out the local wastewater expenses, that lighter blue at the bottom, and then the, the middle shaded blue is, is the sub-regional O&M and capital, and then the local capital at the top. And then again, the background is, is the revenues as we go along. You can see here, looking at the bottom graph, that we um, uh, are below that catastrophic reserve target here. We're certainly higher than, than the existing a catastrophic reserve, but we don't have enough either in the undesignated um, fund balance uh, or in rate revenues, surplus rate revenues in upcoming years 
to fully fund that catastrophic reserve. But we do make you know, pretty steady progress throughout this planning period. And in the last five years or so, we're you know, very close or at that um, catastrophic reserve balance. And, and we thought that this was a, you know, probably a reasonable trade-off. I understand that there's a, a desire to keep the rate increases as, as low as we can this year, given um, the current economic climate and, and circumstances going on. And so um, part of the way we did that with the local wastewater was, was in looking at that um, catastrophic reserve and more gradually funding that. So, so here, the last couple of years, you've had two and a half percent rate increases on wastewater. And what we're looking at over the next four years are 2% um, annual rate increases for each of the next four years. And then even tapering down to 1% a year beyond that. So um, at that point in time, you should be you know, really on top of the financial needs for the utility and, and have you know, pretty uh, minimal rate increases, at least based on, on the information that we have right now. Um, are there any questions at this point on the, on the financial plans? or the information in these last two slides. Okay, then I will continue. Um, so the next slide, um, yeah, this just summarizes the four-year rate plans for the next two years. Um, for the water utility, 2% initially, followed by three years of 4%. And, and those 4% are really driven by you know, our assumption of 6% of rate increases from Sonoma Water, uh, and that's a very significant part of your overall cost structure of the water utility. Um, they're indicating, you know, and recently they've been in the 5 to 6% uh, range, and, and, and we wanted to reflect the 6% the here. And then on wastewater, 2% uh, a year should, should be adequate for the next four years. I have a question. Okay. So on the water side, uh, does that 2% include the water agency pass-through, the fixed, and the usage? Yes, and, and, and let me talk about that uh, briefly, um, and we'll talk more about that going forward. But for the last five or even, even 10 years, I think you've had the automatic pass-through adjustment on your water usage rates tied to what the water, um, Sonoma Water does with their rates. And they have become much more predictable in the percentage increases that they're coming forward with. They used to you know, vary quite a bit um, historically, but in the last few years have been really in the five to 6% range. Um, and because we are looking at fairly modest rate increases here, and because so much of your water rate revenue comes from the water usage charges, we thought it more, more prudent and really advantageous if we uh, do away with the automatic pass-through and we simply dial in uh, an estimated 6% rate increase in those costs and develop specific rate schedules for you on, on that basis. Um, it, it saves the, the time and the energy and the expense of going through that automatic adjustment process and informing customers of those changes that, that uh, would be occurring through the pass-through adjustment. Um, and, and so it, it, it saves some administrative burden that way as well as expense. Um, and and we, we really felt is warranted given the much better predictability of what the uh, Sonoma Water is doing with their rates each year. So we've incorporated that. And I think, I think generally staff is supportive of, of that direction. So we wanted to, to bring that forward for your consideration. Okay, so if we go to the next slide, um, uh, wanted to shift gears more to the, to the rates now, and we'll talk more about this in a couple of weeks um, towards the end of, of October, but this is the current water rate structure. We have a two-tier structure for both um, single family residential as well as duplex accounts, um, and then also for your irrigation accounts that are uh, it's also a two-tier structure. And then a uniform water rate structure uh, for commercial multifamily accounts as, as well as single family if they don't have any irrigation needs. Um, the tier one usage for the residential is tied to the sewer cap. So that's the winter water use that's used for sewer billing. It basically is allowing um, uh, the water needs for indoor water needs for customers to be at the lower tier one rate. And then the second tier, uh, the rate is a bit higher, and that reflects more of the 
uh, discretionary uses of water primarily for landscape irrigation. Um, for those irrigation accounts, um, the tier structure is applied to, the, to a water budget where each individual landscape account, um, you know, they look at the area, the types of plants and so on to come up with a water budget that changes monthly, you know, depending on the season and the water needs and, and the weather during that period of time. So, so that allocation is really supposed to reflect the, the needs for that particular landscape. And tier one applies to uh, up to 125% of the water budget, and then it steps up to tier two above that 125%. And you can see it's a, it's a pretty significant increase to that tier two for the um, irrigation accounts. Um, and then also within the water rate structure, you do have uh, slightly discounted rates for recycled water. The um, service charges are discounted uh, by 5%, uh, um, or is it 10%? 10%. 10%. 10%. Um, yeah. Um, from, from, the, uh, from the potable water service charges, those service charges do vary by meter size because of the demand that's placed on the system. And then the, um, for recycled water irrigation accounts, their um, tier one rate is also discounted by about 5%. Um, tier two is not discounted because that's really excess water above the budget and we didn't want to discount that. So that's the current rate structure. Again, when we come forward in a couple of weeks, we'll have the updated rate schedule. It's this same basic structure updated to reflect the current cost of service analysis. And then on the wastewater rates in the next slide, uh, we have uh, usage rates for residential and then um, standard low, medium, and high strength uh, commercial accounts, non-residential accounts. Uh, uh, most businesses fall into that standard class, um, but you have you know, different types of businesses that have different um, strength characteristics, uh, create different you know, treatment requirements. And so we have those variances. variances. And then we also have monthly service charges uh, tied to the meter size for multifamily and commercial accounts, and then uh, a single amount for single family homes and, and duplexes. Any, any variation in meter size for single family homes is really a function either of irrigation needs or fire sprinkler requirement or something like that. So, um, so that's the current rate structure uh, for wastewater. And again, we are updating the, the calculations to reflect the, the revenue needs and the cost of service analysis. Uh, and the next slide summarizes what we're doing there. Um, right, I just said, said this, updating the cost of service analysis uh, to justify the rates based on current financial uh, analysis and revenue needs, maintain the current rate structures. And as I mentioned, we talked before, um, recommendation to eliminate the automatic pass through uh, uh, related to Sonoma water rate changes for the reasons that I already mentioned. So we've covered a lot of ground here. I think the next slide is the last one. Um, uh, you know, following the discussion today, our, our plan is to come back in a couple of weeks on October 29th with you again. We will incorporate any revisions to the financial plan uh, that is deemed necessary based on discussions today or additional information that comes forward. We'll talk a little bit more about the reserve policy updates, particularly around the catastrophic reserve. Um, may have some specific language there, uh, but would like, you know, if you have thoughts on those issues today, that would be great for us to hear that. And then we'll share with you the cost of service analysis and the rate calculations and, and present for your rate schedules for both water and wastewater. And with that also show what, that, what those new rates would mean um, for your, your customers and, and comparing at least for residential customers comparing with some of the neighboring uh, communities, neighboring cities uh, in Sonoma County. So I've covered a lot of ground here. Uh, appreciate your uh, patience with this and, and uh, Mark and I would be happy to uh, res respond to questions or comments that you may have. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, do we have any uh, questions from uh, members of the board? Sorry, looking through to everyone to make sure no one has raised their hand. 
it looks like we have no um, questions. I have, I have just one quick question. Um, looking at slide uh, 16 with the, um, the, the rate adjustments, the percentages, uh, the two separate percentages with water and then uh, wastewater, when we present it to the public, do we, we usually give just uh, one percentage explanation? Do we combine the two or do we, do we separate it out when we're explaining uh, the adjustments year to year? I, um, and I, I know, and, and Kimberly, you might want to chime in on this. I, I, we will show typical bills, so dollar amounts, not just the percentage for mm -hmm. both water and wastewater. And we generally then add those two bills together. And so what your combined water wastewater bill would look like. So we can do that. And I think that's probably what, what staff does in their outreach materials. Yeah, so we'll provide example bills, but we will also, with the Proposition 218 noticing, uh, be very detailed in every bit of it. So all of the fixed charges will be identified. The usage increases will be identified by both water and wastewater, by meter size, uh, by strength charges. So there will be very detailed information that comes out with the Prop 218 noticing. Thank you. I know it's, it's um, probably dependent on each individual meter and, and and the different levels that you fall into as well. For we will provide you though with, as we come forward to you with example bills. So Great. you'll get an example bill of the average family of four, which is what we typically use and what you see when we come forward with other presentations. You know, you. I, I'll add to that if, you know, when, when there are significant rate structure changes, what can happen is, you know, some bills will go up more than other bills will associated with that rate structure change. And not just the overall level in the, the overall level of rate increase and in the revenue requirement, but the rate structure change can cause some bigger shifts because we're not looking at, at significant shifts in the rate structure, but just aligning it with the cost of service analysis. There'll be a little bit of that, but it'll be substantially um, muted um, because we're not changing the structure overall. And we'll have more information on that in a couple of weeks. Great, thank you. Any other board member questions or comments? Board member Wright? Figure it out. So I'm, I'm still, I, I'm thinking in uh, the next presentation, you're gonna give us um, a little more detail on this. We have the 2% rate for the first year and then 4% thereafter. It just occurs to me that 2% is not even, a, that's barely gonna cover the pass through for the water agency if there's six, because it's usually about a third. Mm -hmm. And then I'm curious about then what happens to the fixed and the um, uh, commodity rates. So I, I'm assuming that's more analysis is being done on that and that's gonna be presented next time. Well, and, and what, what we've done is we, we've tried to be sensitive to, you know, the current economic uh, environment that, that we're in. And, you know, I think normally Mark and I would try and have, you know, the, like, like we have on wastewater, we got four years at, at 2% and we might be able to do, you know, four years of, of 3% or 3.5% to achieve, achieve the same result here. And we, we could do that. But I think we felt in discussions with staff that there's an interest um, because of the pandemic and the economic um, stress that a lot of people are under that if we could minimize at least the initial rate increase that that would be something that the, the council um, might um, be more inclined to accept. So that's why we tried to push down that initial rate increase as much as we could. And if I may, um, another, angle for responding to that question, you're absolutely right that the uh, rate increases by Sonoma Water will be uh, larger than these percentages. Um, and so it may beg the question of why can these rate increases be so low when a major part of your operating costs are going up by a higher percentage. And what's going on really um, in the background is your debt service is dropping off. There's a series of um, bonds that are, are expiring or that are being paid off in the coming years. And that's gonna give you more room in your budget. Um, and so that's absorbing a lot of the costs is the fact that those costs are going away. You also have significant undesignated reserves in the water utility. And so we're able to fund that catastrophic reserve fully from that undesignated pot. So we're not increasing the rates for that purpose as, as well. Whereas there's a little bit of that going on with, with the wastewater, but so, so we look, you know, there's 
a bazillion moving pieces in this analysis. Yes, right. We're kind of looking at all of them. And, and this is okay. board member. Good, thank you. This is board member Grable. Just a quick follow-up question to board member Wright's question. Um, don't we typically buffer those rate increases even when the pass-through is larger than our, don't we typically buffer them with our own reserves um, in that manner for the same reasons you listed about economic um, economic impacts? Don't we typically do that anyway? You know, I, I think what's, what's happened is um, it, it's not a, a specific buffering or reduction, you know, to dip into reserves. But, but if you look at the water purchase costs as a percent, as, as a, a percentage of, of the total revenue from your usage rates, those water purchase costs are roughly 50% of, of the costs that are recovered through the water usage rates. And so if we look at a 5% um, Sonoma County or uh, Sonoma water rate increase um, and, and that gets spread over, you know, the larger amount of water usage costs, you know, results in about a two and a half percent increase in those rates. Now we're not recovering for cost increases in that other half of, of the, uh, the costs that are included in that, but that's where we had the five increases service charge uh, to offset that. So, so that worked pretty well for the last um, uh, five years. And so we, you know, that served the, the city well, but we figured at, at this point in time to, to just, you know, dial in those uh, estimated cost increases into the rate schedule and have a uniform across the board rate adjustment um, going forward was uh, appropriate at this time. Also, if you if you look on slide eight, uh, you did it did summarize the list of reserves that are existing, and those do will act as a buffer going forward. If and if there comes to pass a different change in cost than was anticipated, um, if the Sonoma water rates go up by more than what we expect, then those reserves are there to act as a buffer, as you say, uh, to protect you against that. Um, but we're not funding anything out of those reserves at this moment. Well, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate all the work that's gone into this, especially thinking about, you know, the current financial impact that our ratepayers are probably going through right now because of the pandemic. And, and um, I think that it's the, the fact that we've been able to keep it at that rate um, moving forward, that suggested rate for next fiscal year is, is fantastic. And, and I think that um, that should be, you know, commended for all the work that you guys have done. So really appreciate that. Um, if there are no more board questions, I will open it up for a public comment. Um, Chair Watts? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, no. Can I just uh, close really quick um, before you open it up for um, the uh, public comment? And, and we really appreciate the subcommittee's feedback and initial um, input on the uh, information we've provided today. And really, when um, You'll, you'll see you, you all should have been received a request for a meeting uh, with your council appointee. Uh, we will be meeting individually just to kind of go over the drivers and in recognition of the current economic conditions, uh, wanting to get uh, feedback to make sure that we're on the right track. So just wanted to also make sure that the subcommittee was aware that those um, either have been scheduled or are being scheduled. And we really appreciate the board and council's time um, because we know that, uh, you know, this is um, a multi-year rate increase that we're bringing forward. And we wanna make sure that we're meeting uh, all needs and feedback of the board and the council to the best of our ability. So uh, thank you for allowing me to share that information. Thank you, that's very helpful. All right, well, we will open this for uh, public comments on item 4.1. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please uh, raise your hand. If you are dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Secretary, do we have any uh, live raised hands or emails or voicemail public comments received um, at this time? We do have one in the Q&A. Um, 
an anonymous attendee asked how were CIP spending needs estimated for the coming years? Thank you. Is there any uh, anyone able to comment on that? I can comment on that. We have master plans actually for both water, wastewater, and sub-regional. So we know um, the amounts of um, funding that we should be um, applying to those in order to cover those expenditures for those projects that are um, coming forward. Um, we are not um, proposing funding to the levels that the master plans are requesting at this point. Um, because we are going to work towards um, spending appropriations we already have towards some of those projects. Uh, and then in future years, we will likely be seeing increases to um, appropriations to CIP to increase those to meet the master plan um, recommendations. Thank you very much. All right, well, if that is, uh, if there's no other public comments or any other comments from the board, um, we can move on to item five, which is to adjourn the meeting. So I'd like to adjourn the meeting at 2.01 p.m. Uh, thank you everyone for being here and uh, we will see each other on Thursday. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.